Nothing exhibits trust in God more than obedience. It's just simple. And by obedience, I'm not saying jumping back into the moral thing. I'm jumping into God leads His people. Have you ever been in a situation that wasn't necessarily the best situation for you, but you run across someone else who's in an even worse situation than you? Maybe not even worse, but just in a bad situation, but you're the one that knows the Lord? Have you ever had one of those impressions where something just comes along that you maybe wouldn't think of on your own? Not saying you're a terrible person, but not just something you're looking for the opportunity to give away $500. And you run across somebody in a situation, you're like, but I'm in a bad situation. And all of a sudden you have this impression they need help. And you have two options, right? The option is to say, you know what? That could be the Lord. That could be the Lord leading me to do this, right? And if he's leading me to do this, I need to do it. But even if it's not him leading me to do this, it's not going to hurt anybody for me to help someone out, right? But what happens if we don't really have this trust, if we don't really have this lordship idea, if we don't have this idea of thy will be done being very important to us, we start getting rational. You ever done that before? You think I don't write a check to the church, I don't get rational? I'm not saying go out. Let's all go be irrational for Jesus. He gives us instructions on that. Don't go be irrational for Jesus just for the sake of it. Sometimes he calls us to be irrational. But I'll sit down and write a check and I'll go, you know what, Lord, here, this is where we're at. I sign my name, get my pen right down to the last N, you know, John Sin, and I'm just like, ooh, ooh, I'm not, ooh, you, ooh, boy, cell phone bills are high. Sure you can pull that one off? Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, car's out of gas. Got to fill that van up. That takes a lot. You see, am I, am I the only guy that does that stuff? Where all of a sudden you get involved and now it's all of a sudden, yeah, I've got to make better decisions with my money. Are you serious? My father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. If he was hungry, he wouldn't ask me for it. He doesn't need me for anything. And because all of his resources are mine, I'm not limited by my check. I'm not limited by my rationality. I'm only limited by my, will, by my willingness to obey. I was going to seminary and I had a couple that I knew. And I lived about, I mean, me and Rachel were married. So my family was down the street. But we liked to go back. My parents and her parents lived in the same hometown, and we liked to go back for Christmas. And we always could. It was never an issue. Well, I knew some people that it wasn't like that. They were from Oregon or somewhere far away from Louisville, Kentucky. And going home for Christmas wasn't a matter of can we. They got off work. They had time. But the money to get there, back and forth. And they were all planning to go And like at the last minute, the day before they were leaving to head back to Oregon to see their family that they haven't seen in a year. And they are all excited, getting ready to go. And in class, one day, the husband meets this guy who's going to be staying in the dorm all week. For, I think, three weeks over Christmas break. And like campus is a ghost town. Everybody leaves. And this guy was going to be in the, in the dorms by himself for three weeks because he was going to fly to where he was from. He was even further than they were. And he goes, he was impressed upon him. You know what? I think it's more important this guy gets to go see his family than it is for us to see him. We have each other. He has no one here. Let's give him our money. So they take their $500 that they were using to travel back to Oregon and they gave it to him. Okay. He buys a last minute ticket, goes to see his family, blah, 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 wonderful story. You think, oh, that's so nice. Yeah, it gets better. Last day before they leave, they're driving, go to the mailbox, open the mail, boom, $500 check. Somebody they went to church with three years ago, thinking about you, point being, God didn't send them that check after they were obedient. God sent that check before they were obedient. God had prepped and planned and prepared to bless two people with the same $500. 
And I guarantee you that check would have still been there had they not given it away, but they would have opened up that money and saw that check, had that conversation prior and went, why can't we just trust him? You ever had that experience before? Am I the only guy? You get rational, you get smart, you're like, you know, I don't know. I'm stepping out on faith here. I'm not sure it's a good idea. And the reason I'm using money is because it's just simple math, okay? There's so many other areas, but I'm using that for that sake, and it lined up with my story. And they would have had that conversation. Why can't we just trust him? He had our back the whole time. Instead of saying, whoop, whoop, 500, I've got 1,000. They didn't think that. We need five. He needs it. We gave it to him. We still got our five. I mean, just little stories like that. And your heart just goes, pow, this guy's good. He's got us.